I thought I would just uh, tell you um, about some of the lessons I learned in my years serving as a program manager, first at the Office of Naval Research and then um, at, uh, at DARPA. Uh, I went to DARPA in uh, late 99 and uh, served there. Um, and t I, Tony was in charge for most of those years um, until uh, the summer of, uh, of 05. Um, one, one of the features of, of DARPA um, and, uh, and ONR to a lesser extent, uh, uh, DARPA was like ONR on steroids in a way. It's a, an organization that just had massive resources to uh, put against the problem. But a, a feature of DARPA that uh, I'm not sure is obvious to outsiders is that it is a marketplace that's just a buzz with ideas. Everybody in the technology world uh, across the entire spectrum of, of uh, science and, techn and technologies comes to DARPA in one way or another. Uh, selling ideas to us um, that relate to programs that we might have announced, but more often than not, uh, delivering ideas that we hadn't heard about uh, before. And it, it provides those of us at DARPA with, uh, with a feeling that we're sitting in the catbird seat uh, and um, with a uh, perspective across the world of where science and technology is and where, where, where the bleeding edge is, where the, where the vanguard activities are. So it gives us a very special opportunity to, to think about solving problems given the technology that's out there. And importantly, it gives us an opportunity to think about how we could put people together who might not know about one another because they're all, they're all coming to us. And it's, so it's as if we're a meeting place. And I think that that's an important feature, uh, I believe, of this whole prize uh, scenario and incentive scenario. If you can create marketplaces, and this is a mini version of that uh, at, at today's conference, where people from many different areas of science, technology, healthcare, and whatnot actually get to meet and, and, and share ideas, a lot of good things can happen um, at those interfaces. Uh, in, in my experience, most of my programs were um, um, executed at universities rather, rather than at companies. And I tried to drive interdisciplinary approaches uh, to in, in, a, in a variety of, uh, of research areas. And what my experience was that those teams just didn't naturally assemble. Uh, universities uh, uh, are among those organizations that just tend to be stovepiped, and every department has its has operates in its own world, and uh, and doesn't interact really smoothly with uh, across other departments and and other schools. But once you put an idea out there, in fact, we ran a competition called the Bio Bio Info Micro, where we were specifically charging university investigators to team up with colleagues in other, uh, other areas, biologists, with computational scientists, with physicists, with engineers, and come to us with ideas about how they would work together to solve specific problems. Once we put that out there as a challenge, we got a, a very robust response from the university community. We weren't able to fund nearly uh, or, or but a fraction of the ideas that came to us. But a, an interesting lesson that we learned from that was, um, and it, it may be a new model for how you get, uh, you, you drive progress. The, um, let me uh, recall the number, we had on the order of 80 different ideas from a collection of universities and funded but a fraction of it. So I, I had the painful task of calling uh, not only the, the winners, that's always the good part. I had to, I had to call each and every one of, uh, of, the, uh, of the, the, the so-called losers. And with one exception, they all said, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and do this anyway. We thank you for the opportunity. You brought us together. We have some new ideas about how we can move forward now, and we're gonna do this, uh, do this without you. And I thought that, that, was, uh, that was actually pretty interesting. Um, 
a, a kind of boring uh, uh, lesson that, uh, that I learned in my years at, um, uh, in, in managing programs was that if you're developing um, products um, um, that are supposed to do something, it's, it's, oh, if, if you're, especially if you're at the basic research end of, of the spectrum from a basic to applied research, it's, it's never too early to talk to your customers, the people who are actually gonna be using the technology, to get a sense of what their so-called requirements are. But that said, and I think Dean Kamen will, will address this in, in more detail, it was also important to keep in mind that the requirements that you set for a product um, at, at one period of time are probably not the right ones uh, in terms of where you really want to go. And so when you're, when you're setting goals for yourself uh, you, uh, and, and, and managing programs that are trying to achieve goals, it's really important that you, that you manage that whole process dynamically and flexibly. And the best thing you can do is find really good people and then get the hell out of their way and let them, let them, let them take, the, take that process to the goal line. I mean, you can, a little bit of management is, is not a bad idea just to keep them, uh, keep them headed in the right direction. But micromanaging is often a disaster. Um, the, the, the last point I want to make is that, um, and, and, and I have one, one experience to share with you, is that sometimes you only need to get a project started uh, you, you, don't, you don't need to put all the resources on the table to, to have it push forward uh, to the goal line. I had the experience back in my O&R days, and it was my first encounter with Craig Venter. I won't bore you with the details, but I got a call from Craig one day and, um, um, asking what he could do for us at, uh, at, at, in, in um, the Department of Defense. And I had, I had previously begun to think about the importance of beginning to do this, uh, the, the genomic sequencing of the so-called biological threat agents, first and foremost um, anthrax. So this would have been back in about 90, 96, 97, just after Craig Tiger, the organization that Craig started in, in the early 90s, had demonstrated that they knew how to sequence bacterial genomes. And, um, I said, Craig, we should really get the anthrax project started. I've, we've got a little bit of money. How about, how about if you start moving that forward? And because uh, back then it cost a fortune to, uh, to, to sequence even uh, microbial genomes. So we, I, I was able to, with some ONR resources, just seed the project and get it moving along. And all of a sudden, the, um, the, the guys with the big money, uh, NIH, Department of Energy, started, my, my, my phone started ringing off the hook from them. Hey, how can we be part of this? Nobody wanted to miss out on what they, on, on what, what they saw as, as an important next step in, um, in, in this area of, uh, of, of genomics and the contribution that it would ultimately make to, uh, to uh, bio-warfare uh, bio uh, by a warfare defense. So um, I don't know if that's a lesson that, uh, that the XPRIZE wants to take forward, but if you, get, if you set the right goal um, and people start joining up to, uh, on, on the expedition that you're trying to lead, you may, you may find that, uh, that, has a, uh, that has the effect of sweeping a lot of other people and a lot of, a lot of other resources in, into the process and to, to help, you, um, help, help you move that field along.